Hi, this is Linda King for AcrylicPouring.com and today I'll show you how to do a summer greens dip. I'm using Amsterdam paints in the following colors. I have an olive green light. My lighting isn't the best here, so I apologize for that. I have a yellowish green. I have a brilliant green. And I have an olive green dark. None of my paints have silicone. And um, they're all, you know, the consistency of melted ice cream. And then I also have titanium white as my base color. So um, I start by, for this dip, I start by laying down a strip of heavy duty aluminum foil, tin foil. And then I take a clean canvas, and my canvas today is an 8 by 24 inch. Um, and I press it down into the tin foil to give myself the boundaries of where I want my paint to go. And for whatever reason, I get a better border when I tip it up and I flip it upside down and press it from the top side. So I'm just going to do that. And pull it up. And hopefully you can see how I have my nice border lines there. And I'm going to put my paint in that area only. <clears throat> so I've mixed up a nine ounce cup of white paint and I probably won't use it all. Actually, I'm going to put some gloves on here, but I will use a lot of it. So, and sometimes I use all of it, but obviously the more white you have on the this canvas, the more white's going to show up through your green. If you want more green, add more green. And I will admit I do waste a lot of paint doing it this way. I can get three pretty good dips out of, uh, out of this at a time. Um, but beyond that, the colors start to mix too much and you don't get the nice clear patterning and so I always start out by outlining my area with the white. And again, I apologize for the lighting. I know that the white looks gray, but it really is white. And then I just kind of randomly lay down the white. You know, it's not gonna cover the whole thing but there will be quite a bit of it on the tin foil. So I've used up probably three quarters of my cup, a little bit more of white. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and start drizzling on the greens. And it doesn't matter what order you do them in or what kind of a pattern you do. It's all pretty random. So where there are areas that there <clears throat> isn't any white, I try to fill those with the color. And the colors, these greens, all look like they're really close in palette. And they kind of are, but... It's just enough that the differences give you some of that kind of 3D effect. I like to make sure I get some of the coloring out on the corners and the edges. So it's easy to skip those when you're just randomly putting down color.
And I'm just gonna stand back. I think that's plenty. I'm just gonna go with that. So, next, I put my canvas down. Actually, one minute. I'm gonna fill in those little blips that don't have any paint on them. Probably would spread once I put my canvas down, but. I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to take my clean canvas, flip it over, and carefully set it inside those borders. Sorry, I don't want to get my head in here. Okay, now I, what I don't want to do is start moving, sliding it around on the paint. I want to try as much as I can just to press it into the paint. So I'm just kind of evenly going around and pressing down on the frame. And once I've done that, then I'm going to hold it as steady as I can and carefully go in on the canvas with clean glove or clean hand and press down the edges in the center. I'm not like squishing, I'm just firmly pressing. I'm sorry if my head's in the way here. And over here too, I'm doing the same thing. So I think two critical things to get the patterning that you want on this are the way that you press it into the paint and then the way you pick it up out of the paint. So in order to keep my tin foil from coming up with the canvas, <laughs> because it creates kind of a suction, I go ahead and put heavy things around the edges so that when I pull up, the tin foil stays put. And I'm using my big old Amsterdam paint jars. But you can use whatever works for you. And I've got a cup here, and I think I'm going to go get one more paint jar here. For the front. Okay. Moment of truth. I'm just carefully grabbing my edges and very slowly pulling straight up. You're going to get a lot of suction, so make sure you don't let that suction pull you left, right, sideways, whatever. And ta-da! There's the dip. And you can see how the cells are starting to pop through and form. And I've done a couple of these now, and no two are ever the same. Some have more white, some have less white. So I'm um, just going to stand here with it for a minute, try to keep it out of the glare a little bit so you can see how the cells are forming. And that's really all there is to it. It's really a pretty simple um, and effective technique. So I will take a picture of this when it's fully cured here, or at least when it's um, finished popping cells and everything. I don't use a torch. A lot of people do. I don't. I've just not had very good luck with a torch. I've either gotten too close and scorched my paint, or I just don't, I'm just not good with a torch. So um, you're certainly welcome to do that, torch your painting after you're done, but um, I don't. So I'm going to set this aside now and show you the what's left over. So you can see the lovely pattern that's in the leftover paint from that. And so I'll probably do at least one, maybe two more 
um, dips with that. Uh, but I'll I'll let you go for now, and I will um, enjoy hearing from you if you enjoyed the video. This is Linda King for AcrylicPouring.com, and uh, if you've enjoyed this, please do comment and consider subscribing to the blog and joining our acrylic pouring group on Facebook. And I really thank you for watching today. Have a good one.